Good afternoon and welcome to Working with AutoCAD and Revit with a shout out to Mr. Michael Calkins in Chicago. Yep. And uh, my name is Stan Henning here at CAD1 and I have my two, uh, one architect and one uh, civil engineer today, Brian D. Juge, R-A-A-I-A, and Brian J. Haley, P.E., uh, top ranked Autodesk certified instructor. So we're looking forward to this one. This is a, we have a lot of people signed up, a lot of interest in this, and it's a, it's a good chance to see how to make the two work together a little bit. So, Brian, you probably have a couple slides for us to start off with. Most of you have been to a go-to meeting before, so you know the deal. You want to minimize the console, hit the orange and white arrow. You want to, if you, if you're hearing us, and by the way, uh, raise your hand if you can hear us. We always like to do a little bit of a sound check. Uh, one of you can hear us anyway. Well, there's a couple of you. Uh, most of you can hear us. That's good. And most importantly, ask questions if you like to. Type them into the question box. We try and answer them as close to in context as we possibly can. So with that, Brian, what's the next slide, or are we ready to get rolling? Uh -huh. well, we're kind of ready to get rolling in here, but I do have a couple of polls before we get started. And a little comic here when you're... When you're uh, just get some time to read, but I'm going to launch the uh, first poll here. What software are you using? So I'd like to see uh, people chiming in just to see what's going on, who's, who's using what. And we know there's not a building design suite, but basically what we're looking for is how many of you use an AutoCAD and Revit or Revit both together or what. All righty, I'm going to close the polls here in a second and close that one alrighty and um, let me come over here oh. I'm gonna oh. share that poll yeah I need to show share everybody it. and click the wrong button that's why we saw that there so we here go. we go um, looks like a strong 54 percent so about half of you using AutoCAD and Revit um, so I'll hide that one and now fire up the next poll in here just to see who's out there who do we have out there? What profession are you in? Okay, looks like we've got a pretty strong group out there, and I'm just going to close that poll now and then share that with everybody. It's ni nice to see a good mix here. It's nice to even see a, a civil person and some of those other people. So I'll hide that one and now I'll get one more. How often are you integrating AutoCAD and Revit? Alright, close this pull now and see what we got and uh, looks like most people are doing once a month uh, once every six months or less came in uh, never it never it. Oh, I didn't get to finish typing that question so there we go and then the last uh, but certainly not least uh, probably the most uh, definitely the most most important, most, most important question in here uh, which Brian do you find the most charming uh, All right, we've got some good results in here, so I'll close those in a second and, and close that up. And it looks like uh, sharing that we've got uh, both uh, with the guy who thinks he's funny. So uh, there we go. And the one with the goatee. No one nobody with... likes the one with the goatee. No, but the good-looking one. I don't, good know, looking... I don't yes, like him. So are you. <laughs> All righty. All right, so um, getting back to our presentation here. Oh, hi, that guy. We've got a couple quick quick comments, questions to start off with. Jennifer, uh, any idea how the breakdown of AutoCAD and Revit, uh, AutoCAD to Revit by profession? Maybe we can address that in just a little bit. Uh, Jason says uh, he hates, <laughs> very emphatically, integrating AutoCAD and Revit. And uh, <laughs> the, the Brian that used to work at Landmark Engineering. Oh, wow. Oh, okay. Yay! Yay. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead and get started here. 
Okay, so today we're going to go over uh, AutoCAD, uh, AutoCAD or Revit, or AutoCAD and Revit, how to integrate them in here. And we've got this little cartoon of this guy who's switching back and forth between uh, Revit and AutoCAD and trying to remember his his uh, units. Uh, as some of you might know, your units change. It's feet when you're in Revit, and then if you're in architecture, it's inches when you're in uh, um, AutoCAD, or decimal feet if you're a civil engineer. And that's a perfect profile of Jason <laughs> in that cartoon there. Awesome. All right, so for the next part we've got in here is AutoCAD to Revit. And we're just going to kind of go over some best practices in here. So setting up uh, things in AutoCAD. Um, it's, it's, um, be sure that when you're setting up your AutoCAD to turn off or freeze your layers that you do not want to import or bring inside of Revit. Um, it's just going to be good to have that file set up ahead of time. So even if you're well, not actually using Revit, but you know this is going to be exported out for someone who is using Revit, it's just a good idea to... Just show on the screen the way that they're going to, that it's intended to be printed or intended to be uh, imported into the other software uh, that they have, uh, that they're using. Another thing you can do, um, this is one that Brian Haley pointed out, and I wasn't even thinking about it, was create a W block uh, just for ease of use um, out there so that people can go in and not mess with your file, have this separate file that you can just set it up the way it is, turn off to, or delete all those layers you don't need to use. W block the drawing out or just turn them off, W block that what's on the screen and set up a new file. Um, and then we have draw within the two mile of the origin. And we'll talk a little bit more specifically in Civil 3D later on, but for those of you that are just using regular AutoCAD, it's important that uh, you don't draw too far away from that origin point, that zero, zero, um, where those crosshairs meet in there. It's, it's an extremely important that you uh, locate that within, uh, uh, within two miles or a mile uh, within that origin point. Um, it just becomes very difficult in Revit. In fact, sometimes you can't even bring anything out of, in at all. It, uh, they've now increased that range to 20 miles, but we still are seeing graphical area, uh, errors outside the two-mile range. Uh, and then the other important thing is to set your object colors by layer uh, in there, and that'll be easier to import in and actually replicate the line work thicknesses um, to have Revit line work match AutoCAD line work. And I like throwing this out there because there are times when, hey, I'm just doing a simple remodel or something like that within the program. I don't need to spend all this time redoing all the 3D work in Revit. If I don't have to, um, what I can go and do is just uh, 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 pull that stuff in and um, pull that stuff inside the file, change the line types, line work a little bit, and now just add my 3D portion in Revit while using my AutoCAD background, and everything works fine. All right, so that's kind of the AutoCAD to Revit uh, file through. And then now jumping into the Revit, some important things to think about uh, when you're importing or linking CAD files into Revit. So when you're, um, the difference between importing and linking. So importing uh, is like inserting a block. So for those of you that aren't in Revit at all, um, it's just like inserting, inserting a block. Uh, these files can be exploded to manipulate the line work, and it's useful for details and title blocks or when you want to go in and actually change the, the lines inside. Um, but it is, doesn't uh, update. If you wanted to update, that would be a linking file, which is an XREF file. These files, uh, unfortunately or unfortunately, cannot be exploded. We'll talk a little bit about why or why you wouldn't want to do that. And they have the ability to do layer managing uh, when you're putting that in there. So you can actually work with the AutoCAD layers and going back into why the objects are set by layer uh, colors rather than by changing the color specifically, but then we can go in and manage those files, change the layer thicknesses so I can get the walls to have the right line thickness and things like that within the file. So some really good things uh, in there. And then specifically, as you're either linking or importing the file, just a quick things to remember is positioning. Uh, the default is set for center to center, but we want to avoid that. We want to do origin to origin, uh, or we're going to do uh, shared coordinates if we're using that for the file. Uh, next one would be layers and levels. Um, so when you're importing those, you can just turn on just the layers that are visible, those that are um, not uh, frozen or turned off. Uh, so again, setting up that file ahead of time so they just bring in the, the uh, file uh, the way they want it to look, just the layers that they want on, or levels, that's kind of, the, uh, I think it's an ARCHICAD uh, thing, but layers or levels, so depending on what kind of CAD program you're working with. And then the last one I'd like to point out is the correct lines that are slightly off axis. This is important when you're bringing in any kind of civil work or landscape plans or anything like that. So normally what will happen is when you're, I'm importing a CAD file, it will straighten out those lines that are less than a degree off. 
Um, and this is really nice for those that are doing the guest drafting. I guess I'm drafting that line straight. I guess it's ortho locked. Um, I guess I'm using snaps. Um, it, it avoids that guesswork and actually makes it a straight line. You know, I used to tell people, hey, as long as the line doesn't wiggle in AutoCAD, it's straight, right? <laughs> so as long as it doesn't look like it's wiggling, you're okay. No, that's not what we want. We want to, uh, so this actually, the correct lines are slightly off axis, corrects that and moves it in there. However, if we're bringing in landscape work or civil work, that can cause us a lot of problems, uh, especially if we're bringing in something that's like zero degrees, 58 minutes, and 17 seconds. Uh, that line is no is now zero, zero, zero. It's, it's no longer at that angle. Um, so we ought to think about that when we're bringing the uh, type in here. Um, then when we go to exporting uh, Revit, uh, files to CAD, um, we've got to look at the project template. So the ones out of the box, they're not really set up to make it user-friendly uh, for exporting these files from Revit to AutoCAD. And just some simple things to think about is changing the base point, actually going into the file, looking at the base point, looking how we're going to correct that um, with, within the project so that when it is exported out to AutoCAD, it makes sense. It's not some arbitrary uh, Cartesian coordinates location uh, within the file. That The file has some logic to where you're starting out. And it helps with um, correcting uh, things that, that, that become corrupt or bad within the file, that people aren't inserting things properly. We can easily check that just as long as we take the project uh, template and change that base point. Um, and uh, part of that is using grids and reference planes to kind of help define where that is so people can find it. Uh, the other thing I would say is create a uh, view template for exporting to CAD. This is one that I use a lot. I have a, a friend of mine who's a structural engineer, so when I'm sending my work out, I just have the view template. It basically turns on and off all the settings that I need to uh, so that that's set up for uh, exporting out to CAD. So when he gets the file, the backgrounds, it's ready to go. It has everything turned off so that he doesn't want to see, half-toned things that he wants to doesn't want to see. So we've got that in there. And then um, the next part would be the export setup options. So there's a way to actually go into the file, into Revit, look at those options and determine, you know, what layer everything's going to translate to. So you have categories in Revit. That's what the proper term is. And those are going to translate over to some layer with a layer color uh, associated with it. Um, we can set that up. And we can set it up for lines and solids and all, this, all these other things in there. Um, and then towards the end, we have a general category, and um, the two I want to point out is export views on sheets as leaks and, ex and external references. And that's a pretty long word by saying um, you either are going to make external references or W blocks on the sheet files. Okay, so uh, we want to be able to turn that off. Um, so instead of uh, sending uh, someone uh, 400 file CAD files, we end up only sending them 100 CAD files. Um, so we can we can look at that, and that's going to you know be a little bit easier to digest on the guy on the other end when he receives all 100 CAD files or 400 CAD files that he has to manage uh, in there. And then kind of the last thing that we're going to go in and cover is the Civil 3D in Revit specifically. We I mean, Brian Haley and I are are seeing a lot of this where. We're trying to um, look at this workflow. How am I bringing in site information? How is that being conveyed uh, between the two uh, disciplines in here? And there is a, a, a particular format that you can go through out there, download that onto Civil 3D, where it creates this uh, XML file for coordinating um, the files between each other, finding that coordinate system, um, because in AutoCAD, and for those of you that don't know, um, again, it's outside that two-mile range. Well, when a civil engineer is working in the file, and Haley, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, two miles is really short distance for that origin point. Um, and it's it's bad to go in and start moving the origin point around when working with Civil 3D. Yeah, for example, in Colorado, our zero, zero for our state plane coordinate system, yeah, I believe, is down in New Mexico someplace. Yeah, so trying to coordinate something up in Denver and keeping that within two miles is, mm, I'd say, impossible. But, uh, uh, you know, as an architect, I don't want to go in and start moving that around um, because when I get that update, it's just not going to work. So there's actually a, for us, a workflow that we're going to demonstrate uh, a little bit in here, just going to kind of go brief overview on that. So with that, I'm just going to jump right in um, into Revit here. And what I'm going to do inside my file is I'm going to start off with a new template and start off with 
just the blank architectural template in here. And the reason I'm doing that is to demonstrate how uh, you want to set up the file and where the origin point is going to be. So I've got that project starting up in here. And I just want to show out of a basic file where the origin point is and that it's kind of an arbitrary place that we want to um, define and have that uh, redefined for our project. So here is a, a blank project uh, in here. And I'm going to come down here to the bottom. I'm going to click this little thing that says Reveal Hidden Elements. So when I click on that, I get these two little symbols in here. I'm going to move them apart just to show you there's two different ones. And one of them, well, I'll move it down here so we can actually see the other one. One of them right here is called the Project Base Point. And you can see that this is like a circle with an X in it. This is one of the three origins in Revit. And this is the one that is going to um, work with the Cartesian coordinate system inside of AutoCAD. So wherever this point is, is where the AutoCAD point is. We also have another one for a surveyor point. We covered, uh, might cover that on a different webinar, but that's just where the surveyor uh, is, is going to identify his uh, origin based on some uh, point, whether that's a manhole cover or property uh, line corner, some stake out in the field, something like that. And then there's another one that we can't see, and I just refer to that as the Revit origin uh, within the project. But you can see as I move this around, I get the coordinates to update. So I'm going to hit uh, enter and come back to normal. So here is where that project base point is. And I'm just going to draw some lines in here just to show you that if I go, and again, this is the basic template, if I go from uh, these elevation views right here, we can see that this project base point is some random point. It's not in the middle of the screen. It's kind of over to the lower uh, right uh, in here. Um, and actually in the structural template, it's off even further. It's over there where my cursor is right now. So the first thing we want to do is identify this point and put some logic to it. So I'm going to come inside, I'm going to delete these forms out here, and I'm going to just come over to this reference plane and just define that uh, really quick. Just try drawing a reference plane here, drawing a reference plane here. Um, I actually do a little bit more than this, but this is just a good start. Now I can come in and pin these elements, so I'll pin them down. And then I'm going to come back and make them invisible again. So that is my origin point, where these two lines meet. And then I just simply am going to come in I'm going to move everything else but those reference planes and move it over. And now when I'm going to save this as my project template. And from here on out, um, what I'm going to do is just use this as my start. I'd probably add more levels and layers. We're not going to get into that. But this is going to be a good way um, to start off my project. Now when I come in and I start drawing my building, I can use this as the location of my building and have that as a logical origin point. So now when it's brought into AutoCAD, they have a logical place, whether I'm using these reference planes in here, or I could go in with grids and use the grids as my starting location. That's not too straight, but I could go in there and draw the, that grid location right on that origin point and have that uh, defined. So that is going to be kind of a good step in here when we're going to start off uh, within Revit. All right. Okay, so um, for the next part we're going to get into is now starting to go in and actually importing work. And I'm actually going to switch over to AutoCAD 2015. I didn't really have 14 open too. Uh, but I have the 2015 in here. And I'm going to come in and just start with a, another new, uh, actually a, uh, yeah, a new project. We'll just start with that blank architectural project. But I'm going to show what happens when we start looking at importing uh, the file inside. Brian, this is a little bit off topic, but it's, it's kind of relevant to what you've laid out there. Uh, Bill has a question, um, and Mr. Haley, this is kind of goes back to you as well, probably. From a uh, Civil 3D point standpoint, can we give a Revit building a corner? Or can we give Revit a building corner? From a civil 3D standpoint, can we give Revit a building corner? Yes, um, we can, and we'll see that once uh, I get to talking about it. So hopefully, uh, if I don't answer it when I come on, I'll let us know, him. and we'll get an answer for you. Yes, stay tuned, Bill. All right, so in here, I'm going to start going in by inserting a uh, CAD file uh, inside. Now, one of the things on the Insert tab, we have a couple little areas that we can insert CAD. We can either import CAD or we can link CAD. And actually, before I get to that step, I'm going to talk about a couple other things. And that's this little hidden arrow over here. 
uh, that a lot of people miss. When I click on that, it actually gives in the import line weights. So here we can see these are all 255 uh, colors that we have in AutoCAD. So red, yellow, green, all those colors coming in here. If I scroll down the list, I have all that. And right now it's assigning it a line weight in Revit. So if I were to import a Revit or an AutoCAD file into Revit right now, what we would see is that they'd all come in as one line thickness and we would see no thicknesses. What I could do though is I can go in here to load and I could pick a file out of here um, and assign it uh, and just pick that and then it changes the line weight so it's going to happen with that particular file. So this is kind of a nice thing to have in here. But again, this is based on either the line that the layer is on or the uh, line weight that is given assigned to the actual uh, element in here. So if you're doing colors and you're picking colors not based on the layer, uh, this isn't going to work correctly for you. You've got to go in and make sure you're using the layer uh, standards. That's why we talked about that earlier. Okay. So for the next part, I'm going to go into LinkCAD uh, in here, and I'm going to go into my files. And inside, I've got my Revit to AutoCAD. Got my, whoa. Oh, I'm importing a Revit file. That's what I want. I want to link a CAD file. Hey, there we go. So now I'm going to come in into my presentations again, grab my file that I'm looking for. And I've got, yeah, I've got my site plan in here. Um, and some things to just quick, quickly see in here. I don't have to just import CAD files. I have DXF, DGN, SCIS files, or SAT files, and SketchUp files. So you do have a lot of other formats inside. Um, a lot of options in here, but the ones I want to point out are the layers and levels. Um, I could just look at what's visible. So that'll just be anything that's not turned off or, or frozen in there. So that's one thing that we can go in here and take a look at. And that's why it's good to set up those files ahead of time or again to W block that file out to set it up the way we want to uh, in here. Uh, another thing to point out is we have this thing for center to center. We want to avoid using that as much as possible. We either want to use origin to origin or by shared coordinates. Okay, so I'm going to come in here and use origin origin for now. Um, and then I'm going to come down here and correct lines that are slightly off axis because I'm bringing in some site, uh, site plan work. So I'm just going to hit uh, uncheck that and then hit OK. Um, and then it's going to bring that file in based off of the uh, setting the origin point that was an AutoCAD to origin point in Revit. Now this is just a straight transfer in here. Um, and we're going to get some of our proxy graphic errors. We can't see everything in here, so I'll go to a site plan. Double click, and maybe I didn't see the file at all. Mm, go to my manage links, just take a look at it. It is loaded in here. So one of the things That's we can go and do. only has several 3D objects. Ah, so I can't import it. But I do have the AutoCAD background that's inside here um, from the original file. And I can see that that file is way far away. It's way up in here uh, at a specific elevation uh, inside the project. So I have a uh, height to that um, file in here. And that's another thing to point out with civil files. It does bring in for 3D. We'll talk about topo uh, in another webinar, but one of the things to do if you're bringing in to topographical elements is you've got to be sure to have that as a actual 3D, uh, 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 not a surface, but a 3D topography lines. They can't be flat. They have to have a Z coordinate with them when you're working with those. So that's just a, a thing to look at when we're going in and using those files is to make sure that you have um, that CAD file already set up, four elevations in there to have the topography already laid out uh, within Revit. Okay. Um, the other uh, difference I want to point out is that I went in and when I was doing this, I insert, I did a link file, so I cannot explode this. Uh, there's no way for me to go in and explode uh, that particular element. What I could do in here is I can go to Query and I can look at the particular uh, layer that these are on, and I can see this is on a line. It's a layer, it's flock name, and this particular style, and we could hide that in view, and we would see that particular whole layer disappear. So now these windows are gone. I'll hit undo and zoom in just to show you. I have those uh, windows in there, so I can go in and either hide that particular uh, layer by view, or I could go in and delete the layer altogether. Um, the other way we can get into doing this is if we get into the view itself, uh, visibility graphic overrides, I actually can go down to the imported categories, see that site plan, and inside here, here are all those layers that I brought in. Um, so we can go in and actually reassign them thicknesses, because right now there's no color to them, but I could come in here, um, select all those, go into override, and assign them all a black color, 
uh, just by doing this. And now I have everything is black. Might not be useful for these color planes, but you can see all the line work, all the colors come in black. So that's just some nice thing to have in there. Now I could probably come back into this file, go to query, and let's see if I can grab that particular element. And it's going to be hard to do. Try to grab the floor in there and turn that off. Or I can go back into the file itself, the visibility graphic overrides, and get into my imported categories and turn it off in here, grabbing that particular area or whatever it happens to be called in here. We've got a lot of, lot of different layers inside here uh, based on the civil plan or the uh, Revit uh, floor plan that was brought in. Okay? So we have all that inside of Revit that we can manipulate and play with. Okay. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch to another file in here. And I've got my basic uh, project file. And now what I'm going to do is just set this up to export uh, out into uh, uh, for AutoCAD, so it's uh, setting this up. So I'm going to go in and make like a background that I would for someone else to use within the file. So I'm going to go in and open up my first floor plan, and I've got this file in here. The next thing I want to do is I want to set up a, a background file. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to duplicate this plan. So I come in here, I'm going to duplicate it with detailing just to show that we can turn a lot of this stuff off. Uh, and then I might rename it, and this is level one, this is for CAD. So I'll just put it in there as CAD. Uh, now, another thing I might do in here is uh, go in and maybe apply some template properties. And I've got one in here that's already set up for the CAD structural plans. Um, and what's happened is I've come in here and I've already made some pre-selections for how I want the file to look. So I just come in here and I say apply the properties. It basically turns off my furniture, cabinetry is grayed out, the grids are grayed out, and gives me a nice clean background to set it up uh, for exporting out to AutoCAD. So this is a great way to have your file prepared uh, for exporting to AutoCAD um, within the project. Uh, and it makes it simplified so that when you're working with other disciplines, you don't have to go in and go, what do they need turned on and off? Just go in and make a view template in there, save that out for your file, and now you can export that out um, for Auto AutoCAD or uh, whatever CAD system they want. And then I don't think this particular file is set up for it, but if I would, I probably would have like a location out here where the origin point is. And I think this is the basic one out of the box. So there's not really a good spot for it. Yeah, they have some uh, location. Oh, that's right. We're using this for other purposes, so it's moved around on us. Um, but I would probably also set that up on maybe uh, grid 1C or 1G where that project base point would be, at least making it a little bit more um, clearer for anybody else using AutoCAD or other Revit programs that we have that coordination across the platform. So I think that takes care of most of the basics within AutoCAD and Revit how to work with those files uh, back and forth. There are a lot of other things we get into, um, especially when we get into topography um, and working with the civil engineers. So what I'm going to do now is kind of hand it off to um, Brian Haley to kind of go over to a, a different workflow, uh, specifically with civil 3D. And we have a quick question from Jason before we do that. Let's, um, let's see, and, and if any of, your other, any of the rest of you have questions, Please type them in so that we can get those before we moved on. Uh, we were pretty fast with that. So Jason asks, if we were exporting to AutoCAD, it would typically be for a client deliverable, not necessarily internal use. How would you set up the template? Um, what do you mean by client deliverable? Are you uh, sending this out for a consultant or are you setting this out for the end client? And uh, Jason, there we go, end client. Okay, so end client. Um, trying to think of exactly what that would be used for, but I would, I would assume it would be a similar way. So if I wanted just room tags turned on in this particular view, I could have gone in here in the visibility graphic overrides, or actually more, more, uh, more proper would be go to manage my templates, get into my CAD template or my end client template, and I would come in here and maybe turn on particular tags. So if I wanted the room tags to show up, I could come down in here. Oh, get into my room tags, turn those on, hit apply, hit OK, hit OK. Now I'll just go back in and apply uh, that particular template again. And if I got that, then I got to turn on rooms too. That would help. 
That was roof tags, Jason said. Oh, well, that would help do, not getting the roof tags, but the actual rooms. And Jason, Jason's got good eyes. There it is. So now we can see that we have the room tags in there or whatever it is that you want to use um, for sending out to that client. Um, so yeah, roof tags or room tags, depending on what you want. Uh, putting that uh, particular information in there, we could swap out the tags. So if this client didn't need um, you know, the square footage, just the room name or number, you can do a, a, a quick swap with those tags inside there. So hopefully that answers your question. And uh, same, Rick says, same question, but uh, for sending to consultants, basically the same way? Yeah, it really comes down to getting a handle or a master on this visibility graphic override, setting this up the way you want it to. So I'm not going to get into the particulars on every little thing you could do, but what's turned on, what's half tone, what's turned off. You can change the visibility. You can change colors. You want to set that up for however you want to make that look for your end client. Save this as a um, view template, and then you can just keep using it over and over again. And I do this a lot with my structural engineer. He's in AutoCAD. I'm in Revit. We work all the time together, so I just have this set up and ready to go for him. I duplicate the view, apply the template, send it to him, and I'm done. There's really not a, a lot of uh, work uh, to be done in that way. Okay, so we're playing a little bit of microphone shuffle here, so hopefully uh, you can hear us okay. And now we don't have any other questions at this moment, so let's uh, hand this over to uh, Mr. Haley, and we'll talk a little bit about the civil side of things. All right, great. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Brian. So I'm a civil engineer. Um, I like to work in real-world coordinates. Here I am. I'm in a drawing. This is where my project is going to be. This is where the building is going to end up. I need to be. Able, I want to be able to take the building that the architect or whoever's using Revit exported out and bring it here into Civil 3D or AutoCAD or whatever program you're using. Basically, you're just going to take that drawing that was exported out and either insert it in or XREF it. All right? Real basic stuff. Uh, one thing I do want you to make note of here real quick, look at the coordinates that I'm working in here. So as you can see, these coordinates are huge. This is typical of a state plane coordinate system, right? No. I'm not going to move my drawing closer to zero, zero. Aww. If I do that, it's no longer geo-referenced, and that's bad in the civil engineering world. So what do we do? Well, let me just go ahead and bring in the architect's drawing. And obviously, I need to coordinate with the architect to make sure that it's in the right location on the site. Um, so in this particular drawing, I've got uh, a, a topo. I've got a, an alignment laid out for the road that's going to be accessing this site. I've got some nice imagery coming in from being... Right? If you're not using AutoCAD 2015, you really should be because this imagery you can now get to plot. Right? So I've decided, uh, that, or we have decided as a team, that uh, the building's going to go right here in this little wood pile. That, that, that's where the building's going to go. So I'm just going to insert, like I said, you could XREF as well, um, depending upon how you need to use it. Right? We're not going to get into those types of details. But I've got this uh, site plan from Revit. So this was exported out of Revit. I'm going to insert it. I'm going to place it on the site where it needs to be. All right, so I'm going to place it, oh, I don't know, let's say right about there. I don't know, let's uh, rotate it around a bit. Let's see, I don't know, we'll rotate it that way, uh, something like that. Maybe adjust it a little bit, right? I know what you guys are thinking. This is really scary. An engineer is placing a building on the site. Mm. But uh, again, I'm coordinating with the architect, and this is where we've decided that the, we want the building to be. Now, this surface that we're looking at, this is a civil 3D surface. It is at elevation. I need to come in here and set this Revit model, this Revit drawing, to be at the correct elevation as well. So I need, I, this is going to be a three-dimensional thing. Uh, if you're using Civil 3D, there's a really cool tool that will at least get you close to the surface location. I can grab the surface, and then I have this great tool under my surface tools called Move Blocks to Surface. This allows me to take that block or any blocks that are inserted into the drawing and move them up to a surface. So I'll choose Move Blocks to Surface. In this particular drawing, I only have the one block inserted into the drawing, so that's going to be simple enough. And it basically just takes the insertion point of the block and sets the elevation the same as the surface. So if I take this block and I list it, you can see the elevation. 
Uh, it's right there. The elevation is at elevation. All right, so we're good to go. All right, so nothing new here. But he, here's what I need to do now. I, I need to be able to set this up so that the architect can bring this drawing into Revit. Ooh, I know. Scary, right? Well, there's a couple of things I got to do. First of all, this can't be a civil 3D drawing. It needs to be an AutoCAD drawing. The second thing I need to do is I need to tell, somehow convey where this building is on this drawing back to Revit so that when the drawing comes in, it gets placed in the correct location. So first thing I need to do is tell it where in the world it is. The way we do that is we install the Autodesk, the shared reference point utility. All right, so this is going to show up under your toolbox. Uh, in order to access this, you need to go to your subscription website. All right, so let me go ahead and log in. I just want to show you where this is going to be found. All right, so I'm going to go to access my subscription benefits. And I'm, this is going to be a product enhancement. So I'm going to download the product enhancement here. And once you get here, just do a quick search. And what we're going to be looking for is the um, productivity tools. And since we're using Civil 3D, this is going to be a productivity tools for Autodesk AutoCAD Civil 3D 2015. I, I think in a 2016, this is going to be referred to as the productivity tools for Autodesk AutoCAD Civil 3 Dimensions 20. 16, right? Anyways, uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and go into here, and you'll find there's actually two utilities you need to download for this to work. There's going to be a Civil 3D component, and there's also going to be a Revit component. All right, so if you're working on the Civil 3D side, you need the Civil 3D piece. If you're working on the Revit side, you need the Revit piece. If you're doing both, you need both. So you'll download those, install that, and then you'll be able to see this, this utility here. So let me go ahead and run this utility. So basically, I just double click on the utility. It's now going to ask me for the origin point. This is going to be a common point between the two files. I need to be able to tell the architect or whoever's going to be working in Revit where this is. So what we've decided on is we're going to use this back wall here for the shared plane. And I'm going to use this corner here for the shared point. All right, so I'm just going to zoom in here. And I'll snap to the end point there. So it's asking for the point, and now it's asking for north. Well, quasi-north. It actually says that at the command line if you look at it. It doesn't really have to be north. It just needs to be a direction that I can specify in the Revit file as well. So I'm going to snap to this other end over here as well. All right, it's going to ask, okay, what units is the drawing in? Well, this drawing is in feet because we're in the United States and we're backwards and we haven't adopted the metric system yet. Select OK. Every time. We Absolutely. Go <laughs> Absolutely. All right. So it's going to save this file. I've practiced before. So let me go ahead and overwrite that one in there. Yes, I want to replace it. And that's all there is to it. Now, when I send the drawing to the architect, I need to send that little XML file as well. The other thing I have to do, I have to make this into an AutoCAD drawing. Really easy to do. Hit the big blue A. I'm going to export this as a drawing. All right, in 2015, this changed a little bit, so we got this nice little dialog box now. All right, I'm going to save it as an AutoCAD drawing. Um, it's going to put this little ACAD preference on there. I'll choose Export. All right, that file already existed because, again, I practiced before my demo, so I'll go ahead and replace that. And basically what that does, it takes a civil 3D drawing and makes it into an AutoCAD drawing. Now let's take a look at that XML file real quick. So there's that uh, my shared reference point XML file. Let me just open it just so you can see what, what this is. And basically all this is is it's a coordinate. It's an X, a Y, a Z, and, and then a rotation. That's all it is. But what we're going to do is we're going to use this to set the shared coordinates in Revit. Sweet. All right. You guys ready for something really exciting now? <laughs> yes, a civil engineer. Gonna open Revit. Is gonna go into Revit. I'm cringing right now. <laughs> All right, here's the Revit file. I whipped this up the, earlier this morning. Very nice. Buddy. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you. All right. Um, so basically, what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna import that shared coordinate. 
Now, when you run that little executable file for Revit, or the, the one I just showed you that you download, it's going to show up underneath your add-ins, and it's going to be the import shared coordinates from XML file. And what this is going to do is this is going to import those shared coordinates. Right, it's going to ask for those two things again, the base point. So I'm going to snap to that point there. It's then going to ask me for north. So I'll come up here and I'll set the north along that line. I'm going to grab that XML file. And it's going to create a new coordinates. Yay! So it's set the, successfully set the shared coordinates. So now if I bring in that Civil 3D drawing, it should line up. Now there's something you always want to double check. Underneath the Manage tab, you're going to have your location. You want to make sure that your location for the site is set to that shared coordinate, my shared reference point. If you notice, it's not set yet. you got to set it first. So I, choose, I set it, make current, and then OK. So now I'm going to go link in the Revit file. So over here under the Insert tab, I'm going to link a CAD file. Right, I'm going to browse to that drawing. All right, so I put it under my, right there, right there. And this was that AutoCAD drawing. This is the one I exported out of Civil 3D. So I'll go ahead and open. Ooh, I always forget. Yep, yep. Always yep. forget. <laughs> always. It, it's so different than CAD. So let me go manage my links, and I'll just go ahead and get rid of that. I don't know if you can fix it. You right, probably class. could, but I don't know how. Class, what did he do wrong? Yeah, that's so what did I do wrong. I, 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 I was used to working in AutoCAD, right? So I choose it, and then I, before I choose, finish choosing the file, i got to go change my settings. So the positioning, again, it sets a default to center to center. I don't want it to be center to center. I don't want it to be origin to origin. I want to do it by the shared coordinates. That's what we just set by importing that XML file. Right, I got all those other settings. I do not want to correct lines are slightly <laughs> off axis. No way. My lines as a civil engineer are right, even though they're slightly off axis, because that's how the real world is out there in survey land. Right? Um, I can do it to just the current view, all the views. So let me go ahead and now open. And there it is. Now, this view is clipped. So I believe if I choose my level and let's see if I can remember how to do this, there is a this down even further. Down, down, down. There it is. The depth clip. Uh, no, no. Right there. The check mark. This one, this one here? View. Crop yeah. view. There you go. That's what I was looking for. Woo! He can be taught. And there it is. So as you can see, it's right there in the bend of the road. But what if I wanted to see it? It looks funny. It doesn't look like your civil drawing. It's orientated funny. Yes, it is oriented funny. So this you can go and you're going to have to help me with this one, Brian. I know. Go to the top. So what we're looking at right now is it's set to Project North. So the orientation, which is about, eh, about the 10th line down, is set to Project North. Um, and what we want to do is we want to change that to um, True North. And now when Brian does that, it's applied. We will see the whole project turn around. And there you go, as inserted. So we can have uh, the... Each view can be set either to Project North or to True North. Um, so there you have it. And if I come in here and I annotate a spot coordinate, say I, I want to know what the corner of this wall is, you can see those coordinates are based off of the state plane coordinates that were brought in from Civil 3D. Awesome. There you go. There you go. I don't know if we have any questions. I wowed them all. Yep. They're amazed and dumb. Or they're asleep. <laughs> One of the two. They, they were enthralled with a, watching a civil engineer try to fumble through Revit. All right. So we'll go back and kind of uh, repeat the process here of seeing what we have inside of Revit. Revit, as some people affectionately call it sometimes. Um, we're not so affectionately. No, no. Here Maybe we show go. your screen, Brian. Yeah, just show my screen here. Here we go. We got to move the mic over. Sorry, Rick. We were had the wrong wrong goatee attached All to right. the mic. All right. So there. again, uh, when we're looking at Revit, we need to go in and uh, 
set up the AutoCAD to Revit. So just remember those steps, uh, you know, freeze the layers you don't want to see. Uh, make sure layers are set by, you know, the set objects by color of the layer. Um, when we get into the next part, importing, exporting, link, we have importing or linking. Um, I'm going to say you strongly want to start looking at linking versus importing. Um, we didn't quite uh, hammer in on this, but the, that, that explode is in red for a reason. Exploding in Revit can be a very bad thing to do, uh, but sometimes it's necessary. But you want to uh, just be aware of that. You don't want to be exploding um, Revit files. It, let's put it this way. It's like taking a sand hatch and exploding that in AutoCAD. Yeah, just multiply that by a million, and that's pretty much the result you're going to get. Uh, it's a really easy way to corrupt the file. Uh, also, just like uh, Haley was uh, pointing out, remember your positioning. Uh, remember to set your layers, and remember that correct lines that are slightly off axis. There's some other settings in there, but definitely the positioning is probably the most a most important one um, uh, within Revit to remember. Uh, also, like demonstrated. Uh, creating uh, the project template that you have that origin base point uh, lower, uh, located in something that makes sense, not just something that's arbitrary. This is going to help when you export that file out to CAD and um, creating those view templates so that when I'm setting up the CAD work in the backgrounds, I don't have to go in and turn everything on and off. It's already been done. Um, I've already done that process. Revit is a lot of non-repeating. That's a lot of why I love Revit. There's once you do a dialog box, once you're done, you just save those settings and you can move on with life and never have to repeat all those options again uh, in there. So we have that uh, within Revit. And then as Brian Haley was demonstrating in there, uh, going in and when you're dealing with Civil 3D, there are alternative workflows for importing uh, shared coordinates with using that XML file. So there's a lot of good stuff in there. Um, we've been using this a lot for uh, georeferencing different types of uh, bu buildings and stuff uh, within site plans. So with that, um, kind of the end here, I didn't really have any other, do we have any questions, Stan? Well, we got most of the questions answered. Um, you know, the very first, Jennifer asked the question, uh, any idea how the breakdown of AutoCAD to Revit by profession, uh, Revit use by profession? and you know, oh, I think that was the poll. We yeah, were doing exactly. That. Yeah, so unfortunately, uh, yeah, I don't have a poll on that, um, but maybe there's a way we can look at the polls and get that information. How many were part of which discipline that responded by Revit? Or I, I would I would guess that a hundred percent of the civil engineers are on AutoCAD. Yeah, I think that. I would probably be a fair assessment on that. Uh, but as the rest of them go, I'm not quite sure what we have in there. Um, so yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed our, our webinar. Um, you can look for more at cad-one.com events. And I also want to point out a webinar that's coming up in October 23rd. I will be using uh, the Topo tools in Revit. There's been a lot of interest in those tools. I'm excited to show you some new things that I've been working on uh, out there. Yes, this time the architect will be using Topo uh, in Revit. Um, just to show you uh, what's out there, some, some new things I've been working on. So please look forward to that. Um, and then we leave you with this uh, little cartoon here uh, about uh, coordinating projects in Revit. And uh, it's quite funny if you've uh, tried to do that before and find out that uh, you're on different versions of Revit. So in other words, the project is now not a whole Revit project, but an AutoCAD project. And I want to leave one little other tickler for you. Uh, we can't say anything about it right now, but stay tuned about September 17th. Yes. And see some new things that will excite you mostly. Maybe. <laughs> maybe. Maybe in most. And Blake asked a quick question here. MEP, MEP file and cut elevations in your Revit project and the view depth won't affect the linked CAD file. So the MEP file and the cut elevation in our Revit project and the view depth will affect the... It's related to the question about this one. And he, he comments, will, will, not will, will, will import a CAD ME. Will import a CAD ME. Oh, and then is there a reason Revit's view range doesn't affect linked CAD files? Ah, good question. Ah. Ah. What happens when you read the questions in reverse order? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so what we have in here, and I'm going to have to insert a CAD file, that site plan. No, no, it's a site plan. 
Don't use the site plan, he says. Use the that basic. Use the, the ACAT site plan. There we go. There we go. Um, and I'll do origin to origin. Recline slightly off axis. That's all right. Um, so uh, like Brian was showing, we can go in here and turn off the crop boundary, the crop region, so we can see it. So what we have in here is if we're looking at the CAD file, um, depending, well, first I should point out, depending on how you're inserting this. So when I'm going in and I'm linking in that CAD file, um, I can do current view only, or I could link it in uh, so that it is seen through any view. Now, if I do current view only, it's uh, um, it's going to only be in that particular view that I'm playing with. In this, in this case, it'd be only in level one, um, and that's the only time I'd see it. But because I actually said bring it in, it's going to place this at level one. That's going to be where the origin point of the CAD file is going to be placed. It's going to be on level one. So now when I'm looking at it, that CAD file exists in level one. And this becomes a little bit difficult to uh, manage within Revit in here. And I don't even know if I can see that CAD file in here. Probably not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually import that. 8,000, yeah, but I, I went and, and full screened it, and I still didn't uh, zoom extent. Um, you know, turning off the crop boundary, so it's not even cropping. But, yeah, it's just not showing up in here because um, of the type of file it is. But I'll go back in that level one. The other thing that we can do is I'm going to actually turn that off or delete that. Well, I need to unpin it. That's a new feature in 15. Delete that object. And instead, this time, I'm going to come in and I'm going to link that CAD file. Um, and I'll do the same thing. Uh, but this time, I'm going to say current view only. So when I bring that file in, we can see that we cannot see it when it gets inside the building, underneath the uh, slab or anything in there. I will not see that. That's because this CAD file, I can go in here and say, well, I can arrange it. Send to front or bring to back. And this is where everybody goes the first time. They go, well, I want to see this on top. I want to see this CAD work on top of my Revit work. So they come in here and say, bring to front. And they keep clicking on this and bring forward and bring to front. And nothing happens. It's in the background. There's no way for me to control it. Um, what we need to look at is this little feature over here. And it's called the drawing layer. Right now, it's set for background. And what I need to do is I need to set this from background to foreground. And now I can see that CAD drawing on top. So when we're going in and we're going to use the link CAD and we're saying current view only, we have a way of changing the display order, whether it's being rendered in the background or whether it's being rendered in the foreground. So you've got to pay attention to that. And then don't get uh, fouled up by this arrangement in here. This has to do with other CAD files or JPEGs or TIFFs or something like that. You need to come into the draw layer and mess with that. If it's a, a matter that, well, Brian, that's not what I did. I didn't use this current view only. And I actually placed it on a layer, on a level. That's going to get really hairy on how you're going to place that. Again, these topography lines have a Z coordinate and you're saying at zero, zero, they're down there. And I think, I believe Haley said these are down, at, these are up at 8,000 feet. So you're going to have to go in and mess with the cut plane and really change this around to get it to, to read correctly. Um, and that might take a little bit more work looking at it in 3D, find out exactly where these topo lines exist. Uh, so again, we'll probably work a little bit more on that um, on October 23rd when I deal with topo. So uh, look forward to that when we're dealing with all these topo tools and how to how to rectify some of those situations because that's becomes a big common problem in that case. All right, folks. Hope you had a good time. Hope you learned a few things. And we will have this recorded and posted on our YouTube channel and on our uh, archives page on our website. Uh, probably within the next week or so. So look for that, and we will go from there. Thanks, guys. Appreciate your help on this, and talk to you soon. Bye Later. now. Later.